All right, so today what we're looking at is material testing. And we want to know a few things about material testing, such as um, what is the tensile strength, hardness, and compression. So we're going to look at all of those for a given material. So material testing is the reproducible evaluation of material properties. So reproducible meaning can I replicate this time after time regardless of the size of the material. And so static testing is what the response would be to a constant or a consistent load. Whereas dynamic testing, we're looking at materials response to varying conditions, uh, magnitude, cycling, and mode. So for example, static testing would be what happens to the material if I put a 5,000 pound load on it? Whereas dynamic testing, varying loading conditions, what happens when I go to 5,000, 10,000, or maybe even 100,000 pounds? So we're going to be focused on static material testing. Uh, we want to look at stuff like strength, deformation, meaning how much does it bend or change given a load, fracture, where does something break, and how does it break, and then some design requirement compliance. So the standardized tests for this are tensile test, which is pulling something apart, compression test, which is pushing something together, and also a hardness test. So we're going to focus on mainly a tensile step, tensile test. Uniaxial just means that what happens in a straight line when you try to pull apart the material. So this is destructive and a force is applied until the sample fails. And we use a standard test sample commonly referred to as a dog bump. And this will ensure meaningful and reproducible results because um, all the other factors are the same. Length, cross-sectional area, um, things like that. So this is standardized, this dog bone within the industry. Notice it's three inches long. Um, and the main area of focus is right here in the middle with the one inch width and then a eighth inch diameter. So the other parts of the dog bone are just to secure it within the tester. So tension force is applied until to the dog bone until failure occurs. So we're looking for tension force and also elongation, meaning how much does it stretch. So this graph right here is created. So you have force on the y-axis and you have elongation on the x-axis. So question is A and B are both red brass. A has a diameter of 0.125 inches. B has a diameter of 0.375 inches. If both the samples are tested to failure, will the applied tension force and elongation be the same? Well, you can probably guess that the answer is no, but why? All right, the answer is no because B has a greater cross-sectional area than A does. So if B has a greater cross-sectional area, it's going to take more force to pull that apart. So, to eliminate the test results based on sample size, we calculate stress, which is load per unit area. So, you divide the force by the cross-sectional area. And you get this um, Greek letter here to identify stress, load divided by area. So, if I want to calculate a stress in the dog bone with 430 pounds of applied force, I'm going to use this calculation. 430 pound feet, and I get the cross sectional area by doing pi r squared since it's circular. So my cross sectional area is 0 0.0123 inches squared, 
and it gives me a stress of 35,000 pounds per square inch. And we'll work through these calculations as we go along through um, this particular unit. Okay, so to eliminate test results based on sample size, you can also calculate strain. Elongation under load divided by the original length. So where does it start? How long is it before you apply the load? And then how long is it after you've applied the load or the force? And so it's the amount of stretch divided by the original length. So to calculate the strain in the dog bone, we just take our elongation number divided by our original length, or 0 0.0625 inches divided by 1 inch. So that gives me a strain of 0 0.0625. All right, now, the stress-strain curve. This becomes very important um, as we look at tensile test. So stress now is on the y-axis and strain is on the x-axis. So the initial response is linear, meaning as force is applied, strain goes up in a uniform direction. So stress and strain then are proportional to one another, meaning that at least in the beginning, you apply a force and nothing much really happens to your sample. So we call this the elastic range, meaning that you can um, put a bunch of force on it and the object will still return to its original position. So the proportional limit is the amount of stress in which the proportionality stops. Modulus of elasticity, then, is the ratio between stress and strain, or in this case, the slope of your line. So, stress divided by strain, or rise divided by run. So, this is the measure of stiffness, the ability of the material to resist stretching when it's loaded, when you apply some tensile force to it. So this is an inherent property of a given material. If the load is removed, the test sample will return to its original length. The response is elastic or recoverable. So this is exaggerated uh, to show what happens. So the elastic limit is the uppermost stress of this behavior. Um, elastic limit is just slightly more than the original limit, but for our purposes, um, they're basically the same. Resilience is the amount of energy that a material can absorb while in the elastic range, or how much um, energy or force does it take to keep the material um, from stretching beyond the breaking point. So this represents the area under the stress strain curve. This is the resilience over here. So why would this be important to designers? Um, again, they use the example of a car bumper. Um, you can think of anything that would go back to its original shape after a force is applied to it. So when the elastic limit is exceeded, we call this the yield point. In this case, a small increase in stress produces a much greater amount of strain. Uh, most materials don't have a well-defined yield point. You just kind of have to look for it when you're doing the testing. Um, come, come back for part two of this screencast.